So yesterday we left off just doing some uh, jumps and brought this in. So what we're gonna do now is look a little more carefully at the jump. And I'm in the ball.cs file right here. What we're gonna do is visual debugging. So we're going to use the debug class. So I'm using debug dot. And I want to do the draw ray right here. So draw ray is right there. Now I'm using the tool tip, the little help information right here. The first parameter is vector three, which is a start. And then another vector three, which is the direction. Uh, and the direction is important, the magnitude, it's not just the direction, but it's also how far in that direction. So if you put a big vector in, it could be 10 or 100 or a million units that direction, or it could be a really small one. And the last one's a color. So I'm going to uh, have the start be the position. So transform dot position. And I'm using, you can use, either use tab or enter to use the autocomplete. Uh, I personally use enter, but it doesn't really matter. Now I need a direction. And the direction I'm gonna use, I basically wanna see what this ray cast looks like. So my goal is to see what the ray cast looks like. It's gonna start from that position. The ray cast is a little bit different. The ray cast, you specify a direction that doesn't matter. How, uh, how big the vector is, and then the last part is the distance. It will go in that direction. So what I need to do, I want to have this vector point downwards, but to get it to go the right length, I multiply it, which is uh, scaling. I'm gonna scale the vector by ground length. And if you scroll up, you'll see the value ground length is one. And if we just read what this little help says, the length of the ray to check if the ball is grounded. So what we're gonna do is basically get a visual representation of that. I do have to choose a color. So it's capital color dot. I'm just gonna go green's pretty good. Any of the bright colors work well. Even black shows up nicely. Uh, I would not go gray cause, or blue because the ground's kind of like a dark gray already. The sky's blue, so try to avoid those colors. I'll just go green and then semicolon. All right, so this should draw ray. The other debug I'm going to do, if we're actually jumping, the line of code that executes is this add force right here. So right below that, I'm gonna reuse the debug. This time, however, I'm gonna go to log you can do a whole lot of different logs. Uh, I'm just gonna use the regular log. This is basically a print statement. It's gonna print out to the console. And I'm just gonna print out jumping. So this should only print when we're actually adding force to create the jump. But the, dr the draw ray should happen every single frame. So the ray should always be there, and this message should only show up when there's jump force being added. Make sure you save it, and we'll go back into our Unity editor here. I made my floor invisible. Oops. I unclicked the mesh renderer, uh, and I unclicked the mesh renderer on the ball. The reason I did that is because I wanted to see the vector to see that, uh, that ray we just drew. So I'm taking the mesh renderer, turning the mesh renderer off. Don't turn the entire ball off because then there won't be a ball anymore, but I'm turning the mesh renderer off so we can see the ray out of the ball. And I'm gonna turn off the renderer on the floor. Actually first, I want the camera to be in a very good position. Now I'm in the game view. Let's go to the scene view. This is gonna be a very small ray. It's gonna come out of the bottom of the ball. So you need to make your camera 
way more focused on the ball right here. So I'm moving my camera down quite a bit lower than I normally would put it. So I'm intentionally bringing the camera down. All right, now I'm gonna make the roller ball and the floor invisible. So I, I actually have two of them selected and I'll turn off the, both the mesh renderer simultaneously. So I just, I have both of those items selected and I'm turning off the mesh renderer. The only thing, when you multi-select, the only things you see are what's in common. They both have a mesh renderer and they both, everything, every game object has a transform. All right, let's go ahead and hit play. Hopefully we'll see a little line getting drawn out the bottom. There it is. All right, you can roll the ball around. Now you have to use your imagination because you can't see the floor right now, but we know it's there. I'm gonna hit jump real quick. And if you look at the console, there's a whole lot of jumping dot, dot, dots right there. It looks like there is four of them. So it actually added the jump force four times. I'm gonna hit the spacebar as quick as I can. Oops. Actually, let's, I wanna clear it out. I'm gonna hit as quick as I can. All right, if you notice, I actually did a small jump. I was able to hit the spacebar for just one frame, about 1 30th of a second. It looks like I hit it for two frames right there. If I hold it down longer, I'll clear it out. So I'm gonna hold the space, and <clears throat> when you click away from the game window, your input doesn't get recorded anymore, so you gotta click back into your game window. I'm gonna hold the space bar down, and it looks like four, there was four frames where the jump force was applied. I don't really like that too much. What, the reason is, what I wanna do next is add a double jump, and then eventually maybe even a triple jump, so I won't be touching the floor. I wanna add all the force in one frame. So let's change this around so it adds all the force in one frame. So I just came out of play mode. Let's go ahead and turn the mesh renderer back on. And if I hit play, it's gonna be a bit harder. Main camera, I'm gonna align with view so that I get that view with my camera. So what's happening, you can see the debug ray gets drawn on top of everything else. It is sticking into the floor, but it's also drawn on top of everything, maybe in the scene. So that debug ray disappeared. Oh, it's right there in the scene. So you can kind of see it. That's really hard to see. It's sticking through the floor Maybe I'll just turn off the floor again. So it sticks through the floor. So what's happening is our code is detecting this rays hitting the floor and whenever the ray hits the floor, it allows us to jump. So it takes a couple frames for the ball to move up enough so that this ray is no longer intersecting the floor. That's the reason that we see uh, multiple frames where we're jumping. Okay. If Normally I jumped four time, uh, four frames in a row. What we're gonna do is multiply the power by four because we're gonna just do it once. Now, the other thing we need to do is the condition up here. So we can do a raycast, but the problem is using this raycast, we're gonna be on the floor for multiple frames. So this is no longer a very good way to detect if we're on the floor. So we're gonna get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more detailed into collisions. So there's a couple built-in methods and they are associated with having a collider. So the roller ball has a sphere collider. There it is. Uh, so it has a sphere collider. Now that's just represented, if you unclick the sphere, sphere collider, it just has this little green wire frame right here. When this sphere collider collides with any other collider, for example, the floor, uh, when it hits, there's a method called, and what we're about to do is uh, implement that. And this is on collision 
Enter. Okay. All right, there is a parameter that goes in here. I think it's collision, but I'm not 100% sure. So let's go ahead and do a quick search and see what we come up with here. So we're gonna go to Google, just search real quick. Oh, do I need Wi-Fi? Oh, it should be all right. So I'm just going to type on collision enter unity should get us to the one of the main resources I use is a scripting API. There's also some videos that can help as well. I just want to get right to uh, the help file right on unity documentation. All right, so here <coughs> they describe the function. They also give you some examples down below. You can definitely read uh, what it does. And on collision enter is called when the collider or rigid body has begun touching another rigid body or collider. All right, so that's exactly what's going to happen when we hit the floor. There's another on trigger enter. If, if your collider is a trigger, meaning the trigger box is checked, you would use on trigger instead of on collision. Uh, we have, a, this is not a trigger, so we're going to use on collision enter. And then the we need a collision uh, parameter as well. So a good way to do it is just basically copy this whole, well, you can even copy the entire method, but there's gonna be a lot of stuff we're not gonna use. But that's a good start right here. So I copy the entire method, so I'll just replace that on collision enter. And look at that, there's another draw array right there. So it already comes with a draw ray with the contact point, the normal, and it's going to be white. And I don't have any audio sources, so we're not going to do any audio right here. There's another method called on collision exit. And hopefully they reference it right here. Of course they don't, but collider. on collision exit. So again, I got there by clicking on the collider. So right now we're looking at collider on collision enter. You can click collider in the upper title bar right here or on the left uh, navigation menu. This will give you all the properties. What I really want is the uh, messages and what these are callback uh, methods when you implement it, it it's going to call this on collision exit. So this is exactly what it appears to be. It's called when you stop colliding. So on collision exit. I'm pasting that right in. Now we're gonna have a slight problem. On collision enter is going to be is going to be called in pretty much just one frame when you collide. So this debug uh, ray that's drawn is going to last for one thirtieth of a second. I don't think we can really appreciate it if it's only on the screen for one thirtieth of a second. All right. So draw ray. I'm mousing over the draw ray. There's three overloads. So let's go ahead overloads means additional parameters beyond the ones we already have so look at this float duration so we get to pick how long it's going to be on the screen now from this I don't know if it's in seconds or milliseconds so I'm just gonna guess maybe it's in seconds so let's go uh, 1f so right after color.white, we're going to go comma 1F. Hopefully that'll be in measured in seconds. If it's not in seconds, it'll disappear real quick. All right, so I'm just saving this. We're not doing anything other than drawing array. So it's not going to be very exciting. But it should at least give us a visual of when it collides. Now, that ray is going to be drawn at the contact point. So I'm going to 
Uh oh. I'm going to make our ball invisible again. So all I did is click roll ball and unclick the mesh renderer. All right, it collided, but I never saw any visual, uh, anything visual, the visually pop up. Uh oh. I multiplied the jump power by four, but never modified anything else. So it just jumped four times higher than it normally does. So I don't even see that ray pop up. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this is probably measured in milliseconds, meaning 1,000 milliseconds is one second. All right, so what in the heck is a contact point? Contact point is the vector three, the position that it hit. And the normal is the direction where uh, when it hits, it points away, perpendicularly away from the object it collided with. So in this case, it should point straight up. Let's multiply this by uh, three so that it's quite a bit longer. I think the normal is normalized, meaning it has magnitude one. I probably should have toned down the uh, jump power as well. All right, so not seeing anything. That's not very good. I don't like that jump power. I really want a tiny jump, so let's go, uh, let's divide by four, so it just barely gets off the ground. So I'm gonna zoom in my view a little bit. Uh-oh. Now, this is a great time to talk about what happens if your view just goes to something crazy and you're like, what in the heck am I looking at? I don't know where I'm looking right here. You're maybe looking at the sky or the ground, but you're not sure which way you should move. A good way to rescue yourself is double click on an object that you know where it's at. So I'm double clicking the rollerball and that should take me right back to the rollerball. All right, hopefully we'll be able to see this happen this time around. And let's get the game and the scene view visible at the same time. And I am absolutely not seeing. It should be white and it should be popping up right there. All right, so let's do the on collision stay. So I'm just going to copy the on collision stay. On collision stay is already going to draw a uh, debug line as well. Let's go, I'm going to make the uh, length of the debug ray the same. So I'm basically drawing the exact same ray, whether it's colliding or staying. Hopefully this will fix it. Now, another thing I have is gizmos turned on. I believe you do need to have gizmos turned on in order to see this happen. Great, it's not showing up. It should be showing up while the uh, ball is staying still, which is definitely not. Oh, no, that's, that's our green ray that's hitting the ground. All right, whenever you're stuck like this, a debug log is a very good thing to do. So I'm just gonna write, instead of jumping, I just put a log statement in the collision stay. I'm just gonna write staying. So if we are hitting the ground and this collision's being called, uh, we should 
uh, see you staying printed out on the console. And it should be printed out every single frame, so it'll appear hundreds of times. All right, and I see it printed no times. So I have a big problem. My method's not being called at all. All right, there's also a green underline, which I totally didn't pay attention to. So it's, it says a local function. Let's go ahead and check out the recommended fixes. All right, I want to suppress the warning. Oh, come on. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. All right, so that was a huge programming error. That was definitely not detected by me. So what's happening is I define the methods in a method. That's a miserable failure right there. So hopefully you're not doing that. So they need to be moved out. I'm going to do alt down. And basically I need to move past the closing bracket right there. All right, that is definitely a rookie mistake. I was not paying attention to my parentheses there. That should fix everything. And now I should have the behavior that I was expecting. Oh, there we go. All right, I did see our ray shoot up for a second. And it's a little weird. It stopped telling me staying. Right there, that's not great. I did see the debug ray get drawn, but it was only drawn for a little while, probably those 18 frames that we got the message down here. Hmm, that's not good. And if you're not seeing these show up, you can suppress the warning or the log messages. I'm clicking on this little, it's like an exclamation point in a little speech bubble. You can, uh, you really should not suppress the error messages, which are all on the right there. If you have an error message, it means your program's not going to run. So if you ignore those, I don't know why you would. Um, your program's not going to run anyways. So I would definitely never suppress those warnings. They're much less important. I, a lot of times, don't pay attention to warnings. Uh, but the leftmost one right here is how you see all your messages show up. All right, so let's talk about how to, how to decide if we're on the ground. So one of the easiest ways to create a Boolean, uh, this is going to be a private. Now, private bool, and I'll call this uh, on ground. And let's start it with false. So now we're going to run down to our on collision enter and exit. All right, on collision enter on ground equals true and on collision exit on ground equals false I'm also gonna go into on collision stay and then on ground equals true also so when I hit the ground or stay on the ground I have a boolean that will tell me that I'm on the ground so now, I no longer need to raycast. So I'm going to take this raycast out. And what I'm going to do instead is if 
on ground. So that's, you don't need the extra parentheses. We're gonna, when we do more than one jump, we're gonna do more than one condition right here to allow us to jump in the air. But for now, we're just gonna go, if we're on the ground and this is the jump button is pressed. So now we add the force. We're only gonna add it one time. So we'll add that extra strong force that'll make up for the other uh, four uh, times that it would have been added. And then we'll just print out jumping, that's good. I don't need to see staying anymore. Something is a little weird with stay, but let's not worry about it right now. It should work all right. strong jump. This might be too strong. So I think my jump is a little bit too strong. We're going to go jump power four. Let's go jump power one and see where that leaves us. You can modify jump power in the editor or in the code. It's up to you. It's a little faster. Uh, if you if you edit a C sharp file, it takes a minute to recom well not a minute, it takes a, a few seconds to recompile. If you mess around with the value here in the editor, it doesn't have to recompile. So it's a little faster. So it should, if you hold down jump, it should just continuously jump. And you're probably wondering how why in the world is it jumping a different amount each time? So what's happening is your ball is hitting the ground. Sometimes it's hitting the ground and then its velocity is gonna be reset. Uh, sometimes it's hitting the ground with a, a upward bounce and then just as it starts to bounce upward, you're adding the force and sometimes you're adding the force before it's slowed down from hitting the ground. So there's a little bit of randomness to this, uh, which is not great. One thing we can do is set the vertical velocity to be zero when it hits the ground. Uh, there's a few other ways to do that. Uh, I'm actually okay with this variability because if you let it settle on the ground, you should get a consistent jump every time. Well, spoke too soon. All right, there's one more way we can fix this a little bit better. When we jump, we can set on ground equal to false. So it looks like that gives us a consistent jump. Well, I should see jumping appear once if things are working correctly. Now, of course, it appeared twice. 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 Hmm. That's not really what I want. All right, some of these problems, figuring out some of these problems can be really tricky. Let's not worry too much about this right now. What I really wanna do is a double jump. So let's think about how we would double jump. Now a double jump, you're not gonna to need to be on the ground anymore. So you may even want triple jump. So let's just talk about a jump count. And we'll do an integer for that. Most people are gonna want double or triple jumps. So let's go ahead and do jump count equals three. So this is basically how many jumps I'm allowed to make before hitting the ground again. So when I jump now, right after I add the force, I'm gonna do jump, 
jump count. You can do jump count minus minus. I think it processes a little faster if you do minus minus jump count. So I'm gonna decrement jump count when I jump. The other thing I need to check, I no longer have to be on the ground, but I do need to make sure I have some jumps remaining. So now I have jump count is greater than zero and you press the jump button. So now I'm gonna decrement jump count, but if all I do is this, at some point I'll run out of jumps. If you want a finite number of jumps in your level, this is great, you can leave it like this. You'll run out of jumps at some point and you won't be jumping anymore. Uh, we will have a little problem when we do that weird double jump, it'll take two jumps away, uh, but I think it's a weird physics thing right now. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that, uh, but on collision enter, on collision stay, this should reset our jump count. So in these, I'm gonna go jump, jump count uh, equals three. You may want to, hard, uh, instead of hard code in three, you may want a variable for max jumps right here. Uh, but I'm just hard coding in three because I wasn't thinking ahead. So this should reset our jump count. All right, so this is really bad code. Why is this really bad right here? Duplicated. It's duplicated. So that's very silly. So let's unduplicate it. Uh, I'll call this uh, method hit. Or maybe, I, don't, I wanted to call it on ground. That's a really void. I'll just call it hit ground. I do need, I am using the collision parameter. So I'm gonna need to send the collision info object over to here. And I'm just gonna copy and paste my on collision stay. Actually, let's not copy and paste, I'll move it. I use alt down there a couple times. And then my on collision stay, I'm gonna call hit ground parentheses collision info. And then I will put that hit ground up here as well. All right, that's what we call code factoring. Now notice one's called collision, one's called collision info. They're the same. It would make sense to call them the same thing. So a great thing to do here, if you click anywhere in here, you hit F2 to rename. And look at that, I edited both of them at the same time. All right, hopefully I can triple jump now. Uh-oh, collision info does not exist. So that's collision, collision, all right. I think we got our errors out. So we're gonna, I think we introduced a huge problem. I just exhausted my jumps pretty much instantly because I don't have a cooldown. So you probably want some type of cooldown as well. Now we use cooldowns. The smart way to do it is with uh, coroutines. So it's been a little while since I've used coroutines, so let's not use coroutines and instead we'll do it a bad way. So there is no update method here. Where's the update method? The update method is in the user control. And again, the way the program flow works, the ball user control update method is called, which then calls Somewhere, oh, and fixed update move is called. All right, so that's where move is actually called. Uh, so every fixed update move is gonna be called. So move is gonna act a lot like fixed update. 
So this move is gonna happen every time fix update's called. So I could put a little timer in here that uh, counts down the last time I jumped and then resets a cooldown. Uh, that's gonna be a little more involved, so let's do something a little bit different. We'll do that the next on the next lesson. Let's instead talk about uh, a big problem that we're going to have. So I'm gonna go and add another, I'm gonna add a wall in here. There's a few ways to add a wall. The easy way to do it, uh, game object 3D cube. And then we'll go ahead and resize this guy. So I want this to be a wall. So let's make it a little thinner, a little taller. And then wider. And I'll move it down so it's touching the floor. Now I think I place it right on top of the ball. <coughs> Now it's a great time to make the ball visible again. Oh, that wall's way too small. I'm intentionally making an overly big wall because I don't want to really jump over it. I want to jump into it. And I think my jump value is going to be too high for what I need to do here. I'll do 0.3 jump power. So let's see where this jump goes in relation to the wall. I want to jump into the wall. I don't want to jump over it right now. All right, perfect. So my jump's pretty weak right now. Maybe a little bit bigger on the power, maybe 0.7, maybe a little bit nicer. I have a slight problem because my camera view is not aligned in both of these right here. main camera align with view so now I basically have, I'm looking in the same perspective between the scene and the game all right I'm gonna move into the wall and then jump whoa that's not good that's not a great way to uh, if I'm not touching the wall the jumps very reasonable but if I go and touch the wall, it just lets me jump pretty much until I leave the wall. What's happening is I'm colliding with the wall, and so the, my code, the way I wrote it, I'm colliding. So I'm on the ground. So that's not very good. So now we need to decide how can I tell I'm hitting the side of the wall and not the ground. I could do this using layers or game object names, but let's use physics instead because physics is way cooler. For example, if I could somehow balance on the top of the wall, it'd be really cool to jump up there. But if I'm on the side of the wall, it's not cool to jump. Unless you want wall jumps, that's a different story. All right, let's think about the collision normals here. If I'm hitting the wall, the collision normal is gonna go straight to the left or right. But the idea is it won't have any upwards component. So I need to check how far up my collision normal is. So that's down with the hit ground. Now notice I set on ground equal to true. Sometimes it's gonna be true on collision, sometimes not. So I need to put the on ground inside an if statement here. Now, for the most part, you're going to have one. You're going to have one contact point. The only time you're going to have more than one contact point is if you hit uh, maybe a corner where you're touching the ground and the wall. Uh, you could have more than two contact points, but probably not. So I'm going to move the this collision or this on ground if statement into the uh, for each. All right, we're gonna check out what is in a contact. So 
So the best way to do it, contact dot. All right, contact dot normal. That's the direction, the, uh, the perpendicular direction of collision. So if I'm hit, hitting a ground, it's gonna point straight up. If I'm hitting a wall, it's gonna point straight sideways. So one kind of easy way to do this, I could get the Y component and I could see if that's greater than zero. Probably zero is not a great value. I if you're hitting the ground, your contact normal Y component should be one. So I'm just gonna go greater than zero for now. And I also want to, let's print out debug.log. Let's see what, what values contact normal has. If I could figure out the values it has, then I could more accurately decide what value to put in here. So when I'm hitting the wall, I'm expecting the Y to be zero. And when I'm hitting the ground, I'm expecting the contact normal Y to be one. So now I can see the values when I con uh, collide with different things. I'm not gonna hit jump here. I'm just gonna, I just wanna read the debug uh, log here. So this is my, I didn't label it, which was very silly, but this is my contact normal. When you're printing out more than one thing, you really wanna start labeling stuff. So as expected, zero, one, zero. So my contact normal is pointing straight up with a, a magnitude or, or an amount of one. Now I'm gonna hit the wall and now if you look, this is where the visual debugging comes in handy. You can actually see these two vectors being displayed. Currently, I'm allowed to jump because I'm hitting the ground. So the second vector, the wall collision vector, now I've printed out like a 999 plus things in the uh, right here, but I'm gonna use visually what I see here is where you can choose how steep you're allowed to make your floor and still jump. So you don't have to have a perfectly flat floor and still jump. So I'm gonna go and say if you're greater than, now technically you need a low trigonometry here, but I think 0.5 will be pretty good without getting into uh, too much trigonometry and talking about uh, I don't want to think about this at the moment, but we'll just go if it's greater than 0.5, that's good enough for us. All right, now I'm going to take the floor and tilt it. Now it's going to cause some issues with the ball is going to try to roll off the edge, but that's fine. We have control over it. We should be able to bring it back and we should be able to jump just like normal. And we should be able to jump, but not go straight up the wall like crazy like we did last time. So this way, because we use physics, it doesn't matter what object I'm colliding with, it matters the angle with which I collide with that object. So if I'm colliding with an object that's more flat, I'll be able to jump, and if it's more vertical, I won't be able to jump. And so that should fix your jumps right there. We'll worry about the jump cooldown on the next video.